In chapter 17, we're going to be talking about absorption systems, principles, and my principles. Absorption systems use heat energy instead of mechanical energy to create the cooling. Heat energy is used to create the conditions to complete a refrigeration cycle. Remember, a refrigeration cycle consists of being able to reject heat into an area that we want it or into an area that's less harmful and absorb heat from an area that we wish to cool. It uses a chemical process to change the low pressure, temp low temperature, low pressure vapor into a high pressure vapor. It commonly uses ammonia and water as refrigerants. It may be a variety of heat sources and it has very few moving parts. Smaller units have moving parts only in the heat source. For example, the valves and controls on a gas valve. Large units sometimes use circulating pumps and fans as well. Let's think back to the compression system. The compression system components include condenser, receiver, evaporator, and compressor. An absorption system includes condenser, receiver, heater, and a generator. Take a look at the picture on the left. You have the generator with a burner. An absorption system based on combination of substances will absorb another substance without any chemical action taking place. It will absorb the other substance when cool and release it when it's heated. If a substance is solid, the process is called adsorption. If the substance is liquid, the process is called absorption. Absorption systems are classified as intermittent systems or continuous systems. Absorption systems have several applications. They can be used in domestic, in other words, in residential environments. They can be used in recreational vehicles. This is a primary spot where you see them. They can be used in hotel rooms. They can be industrial, and they can be used for air conditioning. Absorption systems can be identified by the heat source. Kerosene, natural gas, steam, electrical heat, or solar energy. Kerosene and steam is one that's... Kerosene is a lot of times used for recreational vehicles natural gas for residential, commercial, industrial, steam for industrial and commercial, electric heat a lot of times for recreational vehicles or little ice chests, and we have solar energy as well which is becoming more and more frequent. Okay, Michael Faraday who, succeed, who is the one who succeeded in liquefying ammonia. He exposed ammonia to vapor to silver chloride powder. When the silver chloride took all the vapors it could absorb he applied heat. A liquid formed that began to boil and vaporize, drawing the heat from the surroundings. And remember, any time a liquid vaporizes, we're pulling heat from the surroundings. The efficiency of the absorption systems is evaluated by energy efficiency. In other words, the cooling effect produced divided by the heat energy supplied to the absorber. And the effectiveness, the cooling energy, the cooling effect produced divided by the work equivalent to the heat supplied by the absorber. The intermittent absorption system is used in areas where gas or electricity is not available and a power source or a refrigeration cycle known as superfex and truckhold may be used. This cycle is used in intermittent absorption systems is similar to the Faraday principle. Ammonia is mixed with water in a sealed tank or generator. Heat from a kerosene burner drives ammonia in a vapor form out of the mixture. Vapor is forced up the pipe through a condenser that is immersed in a tank of water on the top of the refrigerator. The water has a cooling effect and causes the ammonia to vapor to condense, returning to a liquid state. At high generating pressure, liquid ammonia drops through the pipe into the receiver and passes to the evaporator, which is surrounded by brine. The liquid receiver is insulated to prevent overcooling. Heat from the burner drives the ammonia from the generator into the evaporator. The vaporization of ammonia in the evaporator produces a refrigerating effect. The tank at the top may be filled with additional water for handling large loads or for additional efficiency in hot climates. Absorption mechanisms must be provided with a fuse plug, which releases the charge from the, if the temperature of the unit becomes excessive, like 175 to 200. This prevents the mechanism from exploding. Absorption systems use ammonia, water, and hydrogen. When provided refrigeration constantly, it's called constant absorption system. In a con continuous absorption system, 
Ammonia is the refrigerant, and a solution of ammonia in water is the absorption. A weak solution contains as much ammonia as possible. Weak means its ability to absorb is low or weak. A strong solution combined contains less ammonia. It is strongly capable of absorbing more ammonia. A continuous refrigeration cycle operates automatically through the use of automatic controls. In the co continuous absorption system, the sequence of operation is the burner is lighted and its heat is applied to the generator. Ammonia vapor is released from the solution. Hot vapor passes through the percolator tube. The solution is carried off to the upper level of the separator. Most of the liquid solution settles in the bottom of the separator and flows into the absorber. This is an example of a continuous absorption system. You see the generator down at the bottom with the flame. The liquid mixture rises, the ammonia vapor separates off, goes into the condenser, the liquid goes into the evaporator, mixes with the water in the opposite direction as it boils off back into a vapor. We absorb heat. Hot ammonia vapor is light and rises to the top of the tube into the condenser. Hot ammonia vapor condenses into a liquid. Ammonia, now in its pure state, flows by gravity into the evaporator. The ammonia flows through the liquid ammonia tube and spills into the evaporator. In the evaporator, it forms a large shallow pool on the series of horizontal baffle plates. The large amount of hydrogen gas fed into the evaporator prevents liquid, permits liquid ammonia to evaporate at low pressure and temperature. During the evaporation process, ammonia absorbs heat from the food compartment of the refrigerator and causes water in the ice cube containers to freeze. The more hydrogen and less ammonia, the lower the temperature. A weak solution of ammonia and water flows by gravity from the separator down to the top of the absorber. At the top of the absorber, the solution mix, meets a mixture of hydrogen gas and ammonia vapor coming from the evaporator. This weak and fairly cool solution absorbs the ammonia vapor. The hydrogen gas is left free as it will not mix with water. Hydrogen is very light, so it rises to the top of the absorber and then returns to the evaporator. The absorber has fins for air cooling. As the water reabsorbs the ammonia vapor, much heat is liberated. Air-cooled fins remove the heat to permit refrigeration to continue. Liquid ammonia and water mixture flow back to the generator. The cycle begins all over again. The system is a welded assembly. There is no moving parts. Total pressure throughout the cycle is about 400 psi at room temperature of 100 at a room temperature of 100 degrees. It uses ammonia as a refrigerant. Uses aqueous ammonia solution as an absorbent. Any type of heat source can be used. The system operates with a pump under two high pressures: high side pressures from 200 to 300 psi, low side pressures 40 to 60. This is a picture of a continuous absorption system with a pump. You'll notice the condenser. You have a check valve and a pump. We circulate chilled water through the evaporator, so this is a chiller system. And we have a solution pump. High and low sides are separated by check valves, liquid traps, pump, or other controlling devices. Operational system is divided into four sections, generator, condenser, evaporator, and absorber. With a pump, the, per the procedure for operation, the sequence of operation, is a little bit different. The vertical burner heats the generator. Heat causes the liquid to boil. Ammonia liquid turns into vapor. Vapor rises through the tube to the air-cooled condenser. In the condenser, heat from the vapor is removed by cooler air passing across the condenser. The vapor will condense and act as a refrigerant. Liquid refrigerant now passes at high pressure to the evaporator. In the evaporator, water carrying heat from the cooled area passes through tubes. Heat from the water tubes is transferred to the refrigerant liquid. Water in the tubes returns to the area to be cooled. Heat that, heat that the refrigerant has absorbed from the chilled water causes the refrigerant to boil and become vapor. Vapor refrigerant is drawn back to the solution. Cooled absorber and heat is sent to the outside air. Liquid refrigerant is pumped back by the solution pump to the generator. The process is repeated. Again, we have four main sections generator, condenser, evaporator, and absorption. It's all connected by steel tubes and the entire system is welded together. And this is a picture of the absorption system. The heat source is applied at the generator and can be from a gas burner or electric heat element. The system is charged with ammonia. 
water, and hydrogen combined in a solution at pressure that shows the ammonia to condense at room temperature. Again, same as the other, we apply heat to the generator, raising the ammonia solution to 350 degrees. Some ammonia rises through the vapor pump. Liquid falls back through the boiler and liquid heat exchanger. It flows back to the vessel through the absorber as a weak solution. On leaving the vapor pump, pump ammonia vapors about 300 degrees. Ammonia gas is mixed with steam. Water is condensed out of the solution in the rectifier. Pure ammonia vapor flows through the condenser at room temperature. After the ammonia condenses, liquid falls to the precooler. As liquid ammonia reaches the evaporator, the solution begins to evaporate into the hydrogen. This cools the freezer section between negative 24 and 0 degrees. The ammonia, hydrogen ammonia mixture drops back through the return pipe to the reservoir to begin yet another cycle. The entire cycle is carried out by gravity-driven refrigerant flow. The unit must remain in a level, upright position. Heat generated by the, in the absorber must be removed. Heat removed by the condenser must be carried away to the surrounding atmosphere. Automatic defrosting and absorption systems can be done by the hot gas method. Hot gas is brought from the generator directly to the fresh food evaporator. Hot gas melts the ice on the evaporator fins. Defrost water runs into a drip tray. The operation is controlled by a siphon tube in the generator. And in A, we have the refrigeration option normally. B, we have the start of the automatic siphon action. C, we have the siphon action in process. D, we have the start of the defrost cycle. And E, we end the defrost cycle. The bypass outlet and automatic defrost from the siphon chamber is closed during normal operation due to strong ammonia li water liquid solution. During normal cycle, the solution collects slowly at the chamber until it reaches the siphon tube outlet. The siphon action empties the siphon system of its liquid. Hot gas is allowed to go directly from the generator to the evaporator. This circulation continues for about 30 minutes. The solution fills the siphon system again and covers the bypass pipe outlet. Hot gas circulation repeats when the siphon chamber liquid level rises enough to repeat the siphon action. In other words, we're not using any um, electromagnetic valves or anything to cause defrost. It's all based on the level of the solution in the siphon chamber. When we're talking about continuous absorption system construction, there are several types. You have a typical two-door domestic freezer, Unit uses um, LP gas or electricity as a sort of heat. Look at the bottom of this picture. You can see some gas controls down at the bottom. We have an internal system with ice formation in the freezer. Units can be heated with fossil fuels or electricity. Electricity may be 12 volts DC or 120 volts AC. The switch can be a switch is used to change over from DC to AC. Combination gas electric systems use two thermostats. One operates when gas is used for fuel, the other when electricity is used for fuel. Installation, installing an absorption refrigerator, installation is dependent on location. Warm air near the cabinet must be removed to allow cooler air to continue to receive heat from the condensers. Kerosene, natural gas, and LP from carbon form carbon dioxide and steam when burned. Carbon dioxide and steam are not poisonous. However, if the burner is not burning all the fuel, carbon monoxide may be formed. Carbon monoxide is deadly. You've got to keep this in mind when you're installing an absorption system. The gas supply line from the house piping to the refrigerator must be tested for leaks. Use only soap suds. Gas pressure adjustments for, for minimum flame and maximum flame must be made carefully. Use a water column manometer. Check the electrical service carefully. Some codes require that the system's fuse plug opening be vented to the outside. This is to prevent the chance of discharging directly into the house. The unit must be carefully leveled. Liquid flows by gravity. Proper air space is required. Combustible products must be moved away from the cabinet. Make sure you have enough air inlets and exhaust for proper combustion, condenser, and absorption cooling. Condenser burner absorber must be cleaned twice a year at a minimum. Three gases can be used as a fuel for gas refrigerators uses, manufactured gas, natural gas, and liquid LP. The most frequent use is natural uh, liquid LP. A clean fuel prevents carbon monoxide formation or carbon deposits. Fuel must be provided at steady pressure. The burner must be designed for the type of gas being used. In the case of burner difficulty, check the correct, that the correct burner is installed. It must have a pressure regulator to prevent constant, unchanging pressure to the burner. 
Prior to installation, know the local codes governing such installations. This is an example of the bottom part of an absorption refrigerator. You have shutoff valves, ignition electrodes, thermocouples, and there's covers. Heat and gas valves automatically control the amount of ga gas burned. S the flame size varies on demand. Electronic ignition ignites the flame. The system may have an automatic flame relight system. All continuous systems require gas volume and safety controls. A bulb pressure temperature control is, is located on the evaporator. It regulates the amount of gas burned. It senses the refrigerator's demand as the evaporator temperature affects the flame size. The control valve is powered by an electric element located on the evaporator. As the refrigerator warms up, gases in the power element expand. They press on the diaphragm in the control valve and open the gas control, allowing more gas to flow, increasing the size of the flame. And on the left-hand side, you can see the power element. As the evaporator cools, the power element on the evaporator cools. Pressure on the gas valve is reduced, closing the heat gas opening and reducing the size of the flame. Turning the adjustment counterclockwise increases the gas supply and produces more refrigeration. A safety valve shuts off the gas if the flame goes out. A thermocouple is placed close to the flame and remains hot as long as the gas is igniting. If the flame goes out, the thermocouple will stop creating electricity. The magnetic coil will lose its strength and allow spring to close the valve, completely shutting off the supply of gas. To reignite the gas, push in the button on the manual valve opener. To ignite the fuel gas, operate the spark lighter mounted on the burner housing. Each burner unit has an automatic pressure control for constant gas pressure. This keeps the changes in gas supply pressure minimal. Newer units may have a tilt control system that senses when the unit is not level and di diverts heat away from the generator. When the system is leveled, heating begins again. Constant level changes may result in blockage or shutdown of the absorption system. The pressure regulating valve supplies a steady flow of gas to the burner. It reduces the pressure and provides a constant gas pressure. LP gas does not need a pressure regulator. There's a pressure regulator mounted on the LP cylinder that performs the same function. It operates much like an expansion valve. Pressure at the outlet presses against the diaphragm. If the pressure drops, the diaphragm moves to open the gas valve and allow more gas to flow. Increasing gas flow presses the diaphragm up, closing the valve. Pressure regulators are supposed to be accurate to about 0.001 inch of water column. Pressures of the regulator must be maintain vary from 1.6 to 3.9 of water column pressure. Pressure needs to vary with gas flow in cubic feet per hour. Gas flow is controlled by the orifice size in the burner. Pressure varies with density or specific gravity of gas. The greater gas flow, the greater the pressure is needed. Portable absorption refrigerators may use propane gas, 120 to or 12 volt DC to provide heat to the generator. The pull down time is two to six hours depending on the ambient temperature. Small propane cylinder provides approximately 70 hours of continuous operation. Attach the gas connection when you're Doing a propane system to the gas inlet fitting, open the valve on the gas bottle. Press the red button on the safety valve, hold it for 10 to 15 seconds to clear air from the gas line. Light a match. Press the red button again and apply the flame to the burner. Keep the button depressed for 20 seconds after the burner is lit. Be very careful. If the flame goes out, the safety valve will automatically shut off the gas supply. When you're using gas burners, be sure there's no combustible materials or vapors near the refrigerator. Mobile homes and travel trailers use absorption refrigerators. These units are usually designed to use both electric heating and gas. Gas is used when the refrigerator is not available and the refrigerator must be mounted level. The ones in the mobile home must remain level when being moved. An access to service door must be provided on the outside of the vehicle as well as an exhaust vent. Park the vehicle so winds do not blow directly against the outside vents. The cabinet must be continuously sealed on the top, sides, and bottom to prevent dangerous flue gases from entering the vehicle. Absorption systems require long cool-down periods after being started, 8 to 10 hours. It's recommended that the unit be started the night before it is loaded with food.